Hey guys, my name's Aaron from Geeky Limit Development and welcome to our Xcode tutorials. Now this is part two of the two part series we're creating our Traffic Lights application. It's a fun reaction based game and in the last tutorial we designed our interface, we got it all set up, it now works perfectly on all different screen sizes and device types. So we can now begin to code it and get it to start working. Now this tutorial has been taken directly from our iOS 10 and Xcode 8 complete Swift free and Objective C course, where you can create fantastic, fun, addictive and very useful applications and games with over 40 hours of video content within Swift free and Objective C. And if you check out the link in the description, you can get this course with a huge discount only using the link down below. So make sure you go check that out and let's begin with this tutorial. Welcome back to the second part of our very first game we're creating called Traffic Lights. So in the first part, we set up and designed our interface. We added in all of our images and the constraints to make sure the application looks good and resizes itself on all different screen sizes and devices. So then, now in the second part, we're gonna be coding the rest of our application. So we're going to jump straight into our project and jump straight over to our view controller.swift. Now in the last part, we added in all the actions and outlets for the current objects on the screen. But there's still a few more things we need to add in, such as variables. Now there's four different types of variables we're going to be adding in this application. Two of them are going to be two different NS timers and additional two are going to be two ints. So we need two NS timers, one for the timer, which is going to control our traffic light to do the three, two, one, go system. And the second one is going to be a timer to start counting up our score, which our user has to press the button to stop. And both of those ints that we're going to be also adding in are going to be displaying uh, the simple kind of um, outcome of those two timers. But we're going to be using them in different ways. One again is going to be for our image view, one's going to be for our label. So the first thing we're going to do then is add those four variables in and then we're going to focus on setting up the ability to when we press our start game button, it begins the countdown and starts animating our image view. So just after our outlets here, I'm going to create our first variable by typing out VAR and I'll call it our timer. I'm going to have that equal an NS timer. So we just simply write out timer there with a capital T and our two brackets. Repeat the process, so we're now going to add in our score timer that we're going to be using again to display and count up the score of our timer and our two brackets. Then we need our two ints which can handle the, the value of a digit. So our two variables, now we're going to create our timer int and have that equal zero. So again it knows it's an int. Our second one of our score int and also equal zero. So, we're going to be using NS timers. Again, we've, we've talked about NS timers and used them previously in the past lectures in this section. And again, they're very simple to use. They just trigger a timer to start counting up or down however we set it. So, we've got those now created. The first thing that we're going to do when our application loads up, we need to format our score int and display in our label. So, when the view loads up, we're just going to simply get our score int to equal zero. Even though we've equaled it in our variable up here, we're gonna make sure our view did load equals it, and then gets our counter label dot text to equal a string, and inside the string, it's gonna display our score int. So that's gonna happen when the application loads up. So if I quickly go to build and run now, just wait for it to load up, you'll see uh, previously, the label just said the word text label, as I didn't change it at all. But now you're gonna see it's gonna display the number zero. As you can see right now, it's now displaying the number zero. So now that we know that's formatted, we're gonna set up our start stop button. So if I space out the two brackets now between it, so how the game is gonna work then, the game can only start if our score equals zero. Because if our score, score basically doesn't equal zero, then we're currently playing the game or we've stopped the game. So we need to make sure that if our score int is equal equal to zero, then we can perform what we place in our curly brackets. So again, we can only start the game if our score int equals zero. 
And when we load our game up for the first time, it's going to equal zero. When we've played the game, we can then set up a configuration later on to then set it back to zero so we can restart it. So if the score int equals 10, 20, 30, 40, then we can't start the game because we're currently playing it. That's the kind of process we need to think about. So if our score int equals zero, we can start the game. And what we're going to do is get our timer int and equal that to three. As our timer int is going to do three, two, one to then simply start the game. We're then going to get our traffic light image dot image to equal a UI image. And what we're going to do is have it named with a string. So to display images within image views, again, it's very simple. It's just like you're displaying text within a label. So when you do displaying the text, you're getting our label dot text equals a string. Again, it's very similar. It's just our image view dot image to equal a UI image named and then the string, which is the name of the image file, which in my case simply happens to be traffic light. So we're going to make sure our image view equals our first traffic light image. Now, again, when we build and run the game for the first time, we don't need to do all this because it's already preset. So we pull it in anyway for when we come to replay the game because obviously the traffic light is going to be displaying a different image at that time. We're then going to set up our NS timer to then start the countdown, the three, two, one, go. So we simply get our timer, our lowercase one, to then equal our timer, schedule with time interval. We need the one with the target, select that and user info. And we're simply going to have it um, scheduled over one second. So it repeats itself every one second to create that countdown timer. Our target is going to be self. And then in the selector, we're going to write hash, selector with our two brackets. And inside then, this is where we then go on to name the function statement we're going to be triggering. But we haven't set up our function statement just yet. So we're going to leave that blank for now. In the user info, we're simply going to add in nil. And repeat, we're going to set this to true as we obviously want it to keep repeating. Now, as I space it out down here so you can clearly see what we're typing in, I'm then going to set up our function statement. So our function statement is pretty simple. Uh, to do this, we just simply type out FUNC, short for function, and I'll call it update counter. And our two brackets at the end there, and our curly brackets, and press enter. So now we've created it, we're going to go back to our selector up here, type out the name of the class our function statement is within, which is our view controller let me do dot update counter the name of our function statement there we go so we've now got that in so when we press our start start button it's going to set our time into three set our traffic light image to equal our traffic light image and then begin our countdown timer to repeat itself every second and what it's going to do is trigger this function statement down below and what we want this function statement to simply do is get our timer int to take away equals one every time it's called upon. So we can when we press our start start button, sets our timer into three, our traffic light image there to equal traffic light, which all just notice there, make sure we put a capital on our L, and then starts our timer to repeat itself every second, and every time it does repeat itself, calls our function to start taking away one from our timer every second. Now, every time it takes away one, we need to change how it's reacting to our application. So, it's going to start at three, and it's already displaying our current traffic light image. So, if our timer int is equal equal to two, so once it reaches two, we're going to have it perform a task. And what we're going to need to do is get our traffic light dot image to equal a UI image bracket named and we're going to have it equal traffic light and we need it to be traffic light free which if I just double check now should be go to our assets folder now traffic light free should be our red one yes it is go back so we reach our traffic light free and then we're going to create an else statement so then else if timer int equals equals one, then what we need to perform is the exact same thing. So if we save a little bit of time, I'll copy this and paste it in. 
we're just changing the file it's equaling. So as you can see here, if our time it in equals two, change the image to traffic light three, else if it equals uh, our time it in equals one, change it to traffic light two. And then our final one, else if uh, timer int equals equals zero, which will be the last one. Obviously, if I paste it in there, we're going to go to equal traffic light one. So again, to give you a quick rundown on how it's working. So this function statement is going to get called every second, and our timer int is going to change every time it gets called. And if I see if it equals two, display traffic light three. If it equals one, display traffic light two. And if it equals zero, display our last traffic light, which is traffic light one, which is our green one, which shows the green light. So we're going to go to build and run now and test it out. We're going to see exactly how it looks and how it's working and to simply make sure it is working. So you can kind of see now how this if statement and the else statement simply work. So if we press start, it should go three, two, one, and then go. Our application is now running. Once it hits green, we want this to then start increasing rapidly, ready for our user to press the stop button. So you can see our timer now actually works. And I'm not sure if it's going to work again if I press it, but we'll try. So it's going to go quick, quick now. It's a little bit messed up because we now pressed it twice. We triggered it twice. We actually, what we need to do is make sure that we can handle um, our timer. So once it reaches zero at the bottom here, the first thing we're going to do is get our timer dot invalidate. So once it reaches zero, we're going to completely stop our timer so we won't go any further. So if I go to build and run now, you should see that when it reaches zero, I can press the start button again and restart the timer and it won't kind of mess up or have any errors because we're triggering the timer to run twice. That's what we were doing before. So we press start, it will now go three, two, one. And obviously that's when our application begins, when we set it up. If I press it again, you can see now three, two, one. So we know our, our countdown's working. We're not using to, well, basically using numbers to display it, we're using images to display it, which I think is a pretty cool feature to add in. Okay now, so we've set up our kind of um, countdown there. We're now gonna set it up to have the ability to, once it reaches the green one, ready to go, it's gonna start rapidly increasing our label. So back within the code, so once it invalidates our timer, we're then gonna give it to get our score timer, to so then equal our timer dot schedule time timer with time interval, we need a target and a selector one, to then begin our score timer, which we're then gonna display within our label. And this is gonna be really, a really fast timer, one of the fastest ones we've worked with today. So we're gonna get this to repeat zero dot, let's say zero, zero, uh, zero, one. So that's obviously, that's a lot quicker than just one second. That's gonna be dramatically uh, repeating that timer. Uh, target's gonna be self, and the selector, we do hash, uh, selector, there are two brackets there, and we're going to leave it blank for just a moment, user info, nil, repeat, we're going to obviously set that to true, and end that there. So we're going to create a new function then for um, this selector to basically read. So we create our function statement, our function, and we'll simply call this update score timer, with our two brackets there, make sure we just get rid of that there. And create our parentheses bracket. There we go. And again, within our selector here, we do what we've done before. Our view controller dot update score timer. So we know that's the function statement we're going to call upon every time it gets triggered. Now this is going to be working a lot rapidly, a lot faster than our first NS timer. And what we want this to do is get our score int to plus equals one every time it's called upon. Then it's going to get our counter label dot text to equal a string, and in the string it's going to equal our score int. So every time it's plus in one, it's going to display the new value in our label, and it's going to get repeated really, really, really quick. So if we go to build and run now, and you're going to see how quick it's going to start updating and start repeating. It's gonna be really, really quick. But then it just shows you, the quicker you press the stop button, the quick, the sooner you stop that timer, and the lower your score will be. So, we do the three, two, one, and once it hits green, it's go, and that's when you need to press this button to stop it. Now, it doesn't do anything at the moment, 
we can't mess around with it or do anything at all. But you can see how rapidly it's now increasing. So once it reaches green, it still says in our start button, start. We need to make, well basically change it to say stop. We also need to have the ability to control this button as when it starts the countdown, we want to simply uh, disable the button. We don't want it to be there. We don't want our users to keep tapping the button, uh, spamming it. As soon as it hits green, uh, they're going to win and cheat. We don't want that at all. So we need to do some button control. So the first thing we do then to control the button, we're going to go back to the top. When we press our start start button here, what we're going to do is we're going to disable the button. So we're going to get our start stop button dot enabled that is enabled sorry to equal false this will then simply disable the button we're also going to get our start stop button again and we're going to do dot set we we'll just find it now our set title just there and we're going to have that equal a string and we're going to leave the string blank we're going to disappear the text that's being displayed within it so it will change what's being displayed to absolutely nothing. Now for control state here, uh, at the moment as it stands, um, kind of, I think there's a bug in terms of we've lost the ability to control it to normal. So just for now, we're gonna have put in our brackets and close that up there. So when we go to build and run now, you will be able to see that, uh, again, it disables the button and disappears the text that's being displayed within it. So I press start. And once it reaches there, you can see now the button's been disabled and there's no text in it, so we can't use it at the moment. So we need to bring it back when the game starts. So let's see then. It's going to start counting down, and we need to make sure that when um, the timer has been invalidated and our new timer starts, then our start start button dot is enabled equals true. There we go. So it equals true. It's been re-enabled again, and we can then press it to then stop the game when we set that method up. But as it stands, and we need to now place in the ability to say the word stop. Now, I don't want to place it within the same kind of section here, because when we enable it and when we display the text, there's a slightly delay when it displays the text within the button. It kind of creates this fade animation effect. So I'm going to set up the button to display it a second before. And I'll show you why, and I'll give you a good reason why I'm going to do this in just a moment. So set title. And I have this is simply say stop. And I'm just placing our two brackets there. Now the reason I do this is because a second before it's going to get activated and ready for us to press uh, stop, we can display the word stop and it kind of tells our users that this is what we need to do basically. It's kind of like a mental mind trick. So as you count down now, keep an eye on the button, it says stop, and then we can press it. As simple as that. So all we need to do now is set up the ability to actually, when we press the button, that it's going to stop. So back in our application, we go back up to our button. Now we originally set it up for if our score int equals zero, that it will start the game. Now if our else, if our score int does not equal zero, which is the only other time that it won't basically reach or simply equal zero is when uh, it's starting to count up on the timer. So what do we do then? We simply get our score timer dot invalidate. That's simply all we need to do. And simply again, because our score equals zero, if it don't equal zero, we then stop the timer. That's simply how we stop the game. So if you go to build and run once more then, and then we will be able to see that when we build and run the game and we're playing it, we press the stop button, the game stops, and we can see our reaction score. So we start it, counts down, three, two, one, hits green, and when we're playing it, press stop, the timer has now been stopped, and we've seen we've got a score of 208. So there we go then, we can like now play the game and control it, and even stop it to see our score. There's still a few more things we need to iron out, but at this point in the moment, you can kind of see that our game is now taking shape. We've got our timer, we've got our score, we've got our start and stop button. We just need to set up now the rest of configurations to once we've played the game, that we have the ability to restart it. So we can challenge our friends, challenge ourselves, and just try and beat the score that we set. So once we've stopped the game now, we need to set it up to have the ability to restart it. So back within our project now then, so in the same button, uh, that all works within the one if statement here. We're going to create a new if statement for if, now this time, our timer int equals zero. 
Now, the only time our time at int is going to equal zero is when we've done the three, two, one, zero to play the game. When we've played the game, our time at int is going to equal zero. So we make sure that it double equals there. So we can only trigger this when we press the button, and this only gets triggered once the game's been played. So if the game's been played, that's how we can get it all set up. So we're going to get our score int to equal zero first. Obviously, that's how the start game works. And we get our start, start button, dot set title to simply equal restart. Now, two brackets there to close that up. So it's going to reset our score into zero, set our button to say restart. So it's changed the score int in the background. The button now says restart once we've pressed it to stop it. To tell our users, we press the button again, it's going to restart the game. But our label is still going to be displaying the score from our previous game. So when the score int equals zero in our first button here, we need to make sure again, we're gonna, we're gonna we'll, we'll preset it to equal zero just to be sure on the safe side and then simply get our counter label dot text to equal string place in our score int. So even though we set it down below, we'll just sell it again just to be on the safe side. So if our score int equals zero, we'll just preset it our counter label dot text is going to be placed within our string there to display within the label. And that just simply means that when we restart the game, we're not only resetting the timer to do the three, two, one, but we're also resetting the score int, uh, resetting how it displays in the label and getting ready to play the game again. So if we go build and run now, which could be the final time we do it, we'll see how our game now works start to finish. So we'll just wait for the simulator to now load up and build and run, as you can see here. So we press start, disables the button, starts our countdown within our image view, and then we can stop the game. And as you can see, as I stopped it, in the background, while it's done, it's changed how our button's now displaying. It says restart, and if I press restart, it then restarts our application. We should then play it again, see what score we get, restart it, does the countdown again, see which score we get, can we beat it, 34. And there we go, we now have a fully featured fully playable and again fully customizable because you can take this anywhere you want you can take it any step forward um, playable application it's quite a fun and addictive game so if you made it to this point you should again feel very very proud you've actually just created your first game it's, it's very exciting just taking those simple features such as the ability to create ns timers and how to control the content upon what an int is equaling just stuff like that, very simple stuff, just kind of unlocks a whole world of possibilities in terms of creating applications or games. So yes, this was a basic and simple game, but that's not the point. It's, it's a very fun and addictive game. You, you may find yourself playing it over and over again, even challenging your friends or family, see if they've got quicker reactions than you. And you could probably even take it a step further as we go into further on in the course, learn about uh, random generators. Maybe you can randomly generate when the go button or the go light, the green light gets shown uh, to kind of switch things up a bit. So it's it's quite it's quite a customizable game. So there we have it anyway. We've created our first game within the course. It's 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 really good. It's a simple reaction game, and uh, yeah, you should feel so proud of creating this. Congratulations! You've now created this fully featured reaction-based game. How cool does that feel? Now, if you want to learn more about iOS development within Swift 3 or Objective-C, make sure you go check out our fully featured course within iOS 10 and Xcode 8. Links for that will be down below in the description. But we started with a blank project and we've coded all the way up to this game, which you can now go on to take and release within the App Store. It's such a cool feeling and I'm very, very proud of you. And I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.